Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today we play with the Nomad Cosmetics Harajuku palette. I have been waiting on this thing for a whole month, and now that it's finally here, this is the look I create. If that sounds good to you, we're getting into it right now. Today we have an exciting unboxing to do. Alright, so the wait for today's package has taken... I want to say over a month for me to receive this item. This is my Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo palette. I guess this is just called the eyeshadow palette. And I'm super stoked for this thing. Oh my god! It's even more cute in person than I thought it was going to be. Here she is. This is the outer unicarton. It's got this really cute printing all over. Oh my god, this is so cute! Alright, so I see some Japanese on the back here. Let's dig into this palette. Here we go. I, really stupid note, I wish this back thing were white and not black. Here she is! So I take out the film. Do you die? Do you die? Because I die. The pressing on these pans is so stinking adorable. I actually think these colors are a little bit more vibrant in person than they kind of made them out to be online. This last row right here. Oh my gosh, do we see just how magnificent that last row is? So the most prominent review I've seen so far is done by Amy Loves Makeup and she basically talks about how this last row of really special juicy shades is pretty much all she wants to use on her face on a regular basis. I'm going to put on my makeup and then let's see how it goes. So sorry, it seems like my air con was on the entire time and I didn't realize. Um, wow, it's so quiet now. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting out with a moisturized face and I'm, you know, I'm using the Touch and Soul Glassy Skin Balm. I like it. I like the packaging more than anything else. It's fine. It's just a moisturizing product. I don't think it's anything to write home about. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It does the job. It's totally cool. All right, let me get my mirror up here so I can actually see what I'm working with. All right, I look busted up close. So I think what I'm going to do for skin, I'm going to use my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation stick foundation just because I haven't used this thing in a while. You know what? My skin has been breaking out lately. Probably because I haven't been washing it properly and this is probably the last thing I want to be putting on it. And yet I did it anyway so that was totally my bad. Okay my booty blender is dry so what I'm gonna do is just spray a little bit of setting spray onto my skin. Um, and what you saw was me dipping it into a continuous setting spray mist. I talked about this if it's not up already, I'll link it um, when it finally comes up. But I have a video called my unpopular makeup opinions or like makeup opinions on things that I hate. And in that video, I talk about these one-time use continuous setting spray products. And I say that you can just get a continuous setting spray mist, okay, and just have the one product shoot out your product. I'm going to go in with another coat because I feel like I did not get satisfactory coverage on my skin especially not on my pimples, which are many. All right, so I'm taking my wet sponge. It looks like my skin is finally at a desired level of coverage for my foundation. I'm now gonna go in with concealer. For today's look, I'm using my e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Concealer. This is in a bit of a peachy tone, as you can see. It's a little bit peachy. And I'm actually going to carve out under my cheeks. What is this called? Nontour? I think it's called Nontour. Where you use a lighter color to faux contour. I'm getting some new tops in the mail tomorrow and I'm finally going to have some interesting shirts to wear for filming. I mean, honestly, it's been so tough just getting some decent looks out on camera. Just because in my closet, I'm actually pretty minimalistic, and so I have just a couple of tops and bottoms. I actually had to borrow a bunch of shirts from friends and stuff so I could get some variation, but in reality, I think I have like 10 tops total. <laughs> Not really, but you know, 10 tops that look different on camera. All right, rejoice friends, because I finally found my e.l.f. putty primer for my eyes. I'm gonna go in with the sponge, tap it all over the eyes, 
All right, so I tested it out on my hand and it does work. It does kind of deposit a thin layer of product and yeah, that looks pretty satisfying. So let's move into the eyes. Okay, so here is where the magic happens. I actually am almost like overwhelmed. I'm gonna do two different eyes just because I can, I'm at home and I wanna try out as many colors as I can. So I think what I'm gonna do is a warm toned eye and a cool toned eye and then we'll just see where that goes. First thing I'm gonna put is Métis Room in the inner corner. Oh, that's pretty. Cute. I'm gonna put Kakigori in the middle. Kakigori is so good, by the way. It's like a shaved ice dessert that you can get in the summertime. You can actually get it in the States too. I think it's just not a very traditionally popular dessert here. Cleaning off my brush, and I'm now going to go into Now Is Forever which is named after a mural. I think that used to be in Harajuku. Okay, so from there, I feel like I wanna go into the crease a little bit with Takenoko Zoku here, which is the lilac. Yeah, the colors are new to me. I'm not someone who has ever really played with colors that much before, but what I can say is it looks like I'm having a hard time blending these two shades together, the green and the purple. It's like when I put the green down, it was really happy, and then I put the purple down and it lifted when I blended the two. And I'm having that trouble again. You see that spot right here where the colors are not blending. So I'm just gonna leave it and we're gonna move on. These are formulas that don't like to be blended too much, so we're gonna scoot onto the other eye. I'm gonna start by putting Meiji Room on the inner corner again here. Now don't forget to Tap off your brush because I had that green on it. Going into Kawaii, which is that brilliant orange, and I'm, it's a relief that this orange looks really cute. Lolita, which I love Lolita fashion. I love, um, I love it so much that I actually got into it for a while, but it was too expensive a hobby for me to entertain while being into makeup, and so I had to quit being into Lolita. If you are into Lolita fashion, tell me what's your favorite for me. My favorite might be sweets, classic, or gothic. I think those are the three that I find most appealing in general. I guess appealing on me, like for personal wear, I think I liked gothic the most actually. All right, I really can't stand this. I'm gonna go back into Nellis Forever and just kind of tap it over just to make sure that it's cohesive. Okay, so from the front, it looks pretty good right now, I'd have to say. Um, underneath, I am wanna use this Kuyoi Niji color, which is a gray. And I'm just going to run this underneath my lash line. It's a pretty light gray. And I get the impression that not just the gray, but all of the shades are just a hint powdery. Not terrible, just something that I'm noticing. And hmm. I guess I have no choice but to go into Visual K, which is that dark charcoal matte color. And I'm so happy they decided to go with a charcoal matte and not a black matte or any kind of shimmer because I'm pretty pleased with the matte. I think it's flexible, it's easy to use, and I'm just bringing it up. So using my bullet brush, bringing it up, I think that was pretty effective. I'm so sad that these are slightly powdery shades because my little kitty cats are rubbing away with every pat I take. Here is what the palette looks like right now. I mean, you can see just a little bit of kickoff coming up. Okay, so now comes the challenge of what to do in the inner corner. I think what I'm gonna do is just take my finger and smudge one of those juicy duochrome shades on each eye. I'm gonna go for Zaku Zaku on the right eye. It's that brilliant yellow. It is golden with pink reflect. Oh, that's absolutely stunning. And I'm kind of doing a winged shape with my fingers, just kind of sliding up with my fingers and doing a little bit of a cut crease, but literally, you've seen, I didn't do anything with my concealer or nothing. I just kind of used my fingers to carve out what looks like a faux cut crease. I'm going into Otaku on the right side, which is a brilliant blue-purple duochrome, but oh, these are so deliciously pressed in the pan, and that cat has been completely KO'd with my finger. She's gone. I'm so sorry, my friend. Oh my god, did you guys see that? Tell me you saw this. Tell me you saw this. 
It's so pretty. All right, doing a swoop with the finger. All right, a very strong pink shift in the pan, but it's pretty much just blue on the eyes, so that's interesting. These are the Duochrome products on the eyes. I love it. I don't know if I could love it any more than I love it right now. What I'm going to do straight up is I'm going to just add a little bit of that Visual K color right into my outer corner, just so I have some of that depth anchored on the corner of my eye. I don't want it to just be liquid liner and that's it. Push it into the corner a tiny bit. It kind of is more at home on the cooler side just because the Visual K color is, you know, a gray and gray tends to be perceived as cool of shadow and whatnot. I'm going to attempt to blend out the top edge of the eyeshadow with Hanami, which is just that pinky color. It's a pinky flesh tone, it's a satin. So I'm hoping Hanami will help me blend these things out. A little bit of look on this side. I'm gonna go back into Kakigori on this side and just kind of, can I get a blend? Does it work? Kind of, but not really. It's kind of hard to get in there and blend. Okay, so we're not gonna push too hard. It looks like it doesn't wanna to blend too much. I totally respect her decision to not wanna to mix too many colors at once, her being the eyeshadow palette. So at this point, I think I'm just going to let go and fill in my eyebrows really quickly. Let's see, for my brows, I kinda of wanna do something crazy. Let's just do colored brows. Let's just go for it. I'm gonna do Lolita in my right brow, pink, because why not at this point? Why not, right? And then now is forever on my left brow. Gotta love that greenish color. I have to say, when I was thinking about a palette that fit my aesthetic for pursuing color, I couldn't have found something more perfect than this palette. I mean, could you imagine a more perfect palette for someone like me? Because I can't. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the blue on my warm side for inner corner. Inner corner highlight, under eye highlight, that whole shebang. And look, I got it too far down. What a surprise. Warm color on my cool eye. And you're gonna notice that they have um, varying levels of brightness. Okay, so first thing I noticed is that I took the color down too far, so I have to pat in a little bit of concealer just to make sure it doesn't look ridiculous. This probably does look ridiculous anyway, but this is a fun look. Why not, you know? Why the heck not? All right, let's talk about face colors. I'm really inclined to use Hanami all over the face. It's just a really pretty pearly, pearlescent pink color. Let's try that. Yeah, that gives me a pretty nice sheen just because of the satin finish. And it gives me just a hint of color on my skin tone. Um, it looks a little bit like a beginner's kiss of a blush, so not really like a highlight. I'm gonna go back into Otaku, which is that bright purplish pink. Oh, that's blue. I keep forgetting that's blue. It looks pink in the pan. It's blue on the face, so. Mm, I've got blue highlight now, but I'm not mad. It's okay. <laughs> Applying it to my nose bridge. I'm going to add Zaku Zaku on top, which is that pinky color. And hopefully having that two-tone effect is gonna cancel out some of the blue and give me a little bit more multi-chrome and not so much just blue. I don't know, we're just playing around at this point. This is true makeup playtime. If you are a visual artist, <laughs> maybe you can appreciate the whimsy with which I am painting my face right now. And if you are someone concerned with aesthetics, you are horrified because I can clearly see yellow all over my face. I actually kind of look like a 3D painting in my mirror. You can see like the yellow hitting these parts of my face in a way that most makeup doesn't. So that's pretty interesting. For today's look, I'm dying to go into this lilac as a blusher. Going into Gyaru, which ugh, Gyaru is such an awesome name for this. Going in oh, a lilac blush. Oh my gosh, finally. I have wanted a true lilac blush for so long and I feel like it's only apt that we go over the nose in a true Gyaru fashion. Oh, how cute is this? This might be horrifying to a lot of you, but this is like super freaking cute to me. To give my skin just a tiny hint of color, I think I'm going to go into this peachy tone right here. Kawaii, just at the back cheekbone. So it's a very watercolory look. I'm gonna go back into Kawaii and put it on my hairline just to bronze up the face. I know this is not a real bronzer, but none of this look is real anyway. It looks like a watercolor painting. I look crazy, but I love it. I've been living for this life. All right, let's talk about lips. 
I am pining for a Lolita. Let's start with Lolita and see where we get. Okay, so <laughs> this was the sentiment that we got with Lolita, which I appreciate, I respect, but there's no way that I would even film a YouTube video with this lip color. So I'm going to rummage around in my lip drawer and see what we can do to tone this down just a teensy bit. All right, so I found something that I hope will not be too offensive. I'm using my AOA Studio Lip Pop in the color Ladylike, and it's just a pink. And it basically keeps mm, most of the essence of what we have, but it makes it a little bit warmer and darker. All right, so this is pretty bold for me. It's pretty bold in terms of lips, which I think is the last thing that anyone else is looking at right now. I'm gonna finish this look up with a little bit of liner and lashes, and then we will come back for final looks. I am drawing on a false under lashes. Okay, so it definitely looks fine up close, but I don't know if you can see it in person. I cut up a bunch of lash pieces from a pair of dead lashes, but I feel like these are way too big for under lashes. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Do I have any small lashes? Unfortunately, I don't really have any small lashes that I'm willing to sacrifice for my lower lash line, but I am going to put lashes on my top lash line. These are the same gross lashes that I am unwilling to let go of from the internet. It is this really long, fluffy pair of lashes that looks super wispy and nice once you open your eyes. So I really want to find more lashes like those, but they're kind of hard to come by. Those really long, thin lashes, they're really wispy. They're super like sparse. <laughs> but they're long and I like how straight they are. I don't really like the super curly lashes. I've said this a million times, but I kind of have very particular taste in lashes. I like them really fluttery, subtle, um, and like not too curvy. So I think the really curvy lashes overtake my eye shape really easily. So if you're someone who has small or hooded eyes and you like a little bit of length and drama, but I guess if you don't like how length and drama is often entangled with curliness, um, try out some lashes that are really long and wispy and kind of straight across. And also, fun fact, I'm finally getting my hair um, touched up at the roots tomorrow. Also, this isn't a blonde color. This is me just stripping pink out of my hair and this is what was left over. <laughs> so, ooh, yes, I know my hair is brassy and it's not too cute. I actually do like a really warm blonde, so that's not what I'm against. I don't hate a warm blonde. What I do hate is uneven blonde and that's what I have right now. Also, my hair is curled. It's like overnight curled and it has a lot of texture spray in it. So it looks super hay-like. And I think that is the problem with being a blonde, um, a clear artificial blonde and having really textured hairs. It looks like your hair is just dead. It doesn't look like you're some model -y girl who has like soot in her hair because she's cool. Like Hannah, you know how Hannah's always talking about having sooty, dirty creek water hair. When I have that, it just looks like my hair is fried, which it's, it's fried, but it's pretty healthy. It just looks gross because I try to put texturizing spray in it. And I don't like that, I'm insecure about that. <laughs> All right, so let's put those lashes on. The lashes are on and I just wanted to say that I'm throwing this lip color away because I noticed as the lip color was on my lip for, you know, two to five minutes, it started smelling really funky and I'm super disappointed because this AOA product is not even two or three months old and it already smells honestly like kind of expired it has that kind of putrid plastic crayon smell and I just know that's kind of the smell of lip products when they go off which is crazy because I don't even remember the last time a lip product literally expired on me that's upsetting um, let's finish this off I'm going to do a little bit of mascara this is my favorite the lash princess and let's just let's just use up these lashes okay I'm actually going to mascara up the lashes themselves I want them to be a little bit clumpy I'm zigzagging just to get them clumped up. Yeah, I love that look. That looks super, that looks super anime girl to me. I don't know, much cuter um, and more graphic. So what I'm hoping to do is get like five or six big zigzaggy clumps together. This is cute for an editorial look. I know it's not cute for every day, but I'm kind of feeling this moment right now. So I am rolling the mascara wand back and forth getting the hairs to kind of cling together. 
once I see them clinging, I'm kind of pulling all the way up. All right, so you can see that I've successfully created a couple of really long hairs. You guys know how like Barbie is drawn and she's got like a couple of really big lashes? I kind of like that effect for this kind of look. Not everyday look, just particularly for this. All right, so I think that might be everything. Let me turn down the light so you can actually see how colorful my blush is. All right, so this is the final look. I love the yellow that goes into purple, that goes into pink, that goes into peach. Oh my God, all of it is just a pastel dream. This is what I wanna wear every day for the rest of my life, but I can't because I need to look professional. I also want to update you guys on the status of this palette. After one use, this is what the palette looks like. You can see significant damage and my two sparkly special shades, a lot of dips in Visual K. I think the cats are kind of destroyed by now in a lot of the pans. Um, so you can only imagine what 10 to 30 uses this month might get me. <laughs> Man, this is super duper fun. Let's zoom out so you can get the full picture. So what do I think about this palette? Well, this was just a first impressions, but for me, if I have a palette that I resonate with on a personal level, or I think the color story is really compelling, I will find a way to make it work. So what we noticed going into this fairly intricate eye is that colors kind of blend away from each other. Um, I'm looking at that blue and that green purpley color. They had trouble kind of blending and meshing and playing nice. Um, I'm also noticing that some shades buff away into nothing, some shades look really different in the pan than they do on the skin. That's totally fine and I feel like some of those unexpected surprises are what make shadows and makeup interesting and fun, right? We really want to dive into the nitty gritty of how these things apply onto the skin. What is the real life finish like? And I have to say these sparkly shades, they look like mermaid skin. Remember when the mermaid trend was really big in like 2017 or 2016? That's how I feel with this. I feel like I actually have mermaid skin. It's so beautiful and glowy and lush. It feels like the microest of micro shimmers. Like I cannot even imagine describing to you in words how fine this shimmer is. It is super, super extra fine. There must be like nano sized particles in here that contribute to this kind of shine. I don't know. Um, I probably sound very, very stupid right now, but it is incredible. The kind of, um, how do you say this? It's ultra fine. I know. <laughs> I feel like the word fine in terms of like small or minute it's kind of been tossed around so much like we say finely milled or whatever but this is truly the sparkle is fine like it's finely milled sparkle to the point where i can see individual what was the word that hannah used pastilles i had to look that up one day one day she said a word i think she said it was pastilles or something and i had to look it up because i was like what is that french word you are using right now <laughs> i think it might be pastilles like individual little almost sequin shaped glimmers you can see on the eyes and I feel that way with this palette and that in and of itself is special. On top of that, the color scheme is absolutely perfect. I don't know. Such are the joys of living in the city. So I don't know if I shared this, but I actually live very close to the fire department and the police department in my town. So. That's why I'm constantly complaining about urban noise pollution. Okay, so what I was saying is I think this color story is absolutely perfect for me. So I am willing to do whatever it takes to work with this palette because I could not envision a more perfect palette for me. I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah, I'm looking at it and it's, it's just everything. I feel like there might be a hair too much purple in this palette. Like I wish of these two, one of them was a sparkly pink. That's just me. And um, other than that, I don't think I have any other talking points. I'm really excited to use this palette a little bit more, get to know it. Um, part of me wants to say just intuitively, I wanna have a neutral brown in here, but you know what, that would be wrong. I don't want a neutral brown. I think I'm really pleased with the fact that the only neutrals in this palette are this gray and this charcoal color. I think that's perfect with this color scheme. If anything, I feel like this, um, what is this called? Kuroi Niji. I think this color could have been even a little bit darker just to anchor everything because as of right now, it's pretty light on the skin actually. It looks kind of dark compared to everything else, but on the eyes, it is comparatively dark on the skin. Um, on the eyes, it is very, very light. You can see just what kind of shade of gray that is. It's almost not even gray. <laughs> um, but I love this palette. I'm gonna try it out some more. I can't really recommend it or not. Please um, feel free to wait until I get that indie Smackdown video. I know I said August, but it looks like it might be pushed a little bit further depending on the upload schedule of what I have going up. But 
yeah, comparing Luxi, um, Midas, what is this brand, Nomad, and um, Odin's Eye. Those are the four brands of indie shadows that I have tried out this summer. And I am looking forward to doing like a smackdown of all the different looks that I've created and kind of ranking those palettes one by one. Other than that, I hope this was a really fun and fresh get ready with me using this super super duper cute palette. I hope to see you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you will join the family. That being said, I love you guys so much and I'll see you super soon. Bye!